Hi everyone, my name is Dominique with Sonos Customer Care. Today I'm going to talk to you about wireless interference and how it can affect your Sonos system. I'll cover what wireless interference is and how to prevent it in the future. Let's say you're at home listening to music on Sonos and it's behaving strangely. Maybe your music's cutting out, the app is acting sluggish, or the players are disappearing from your controller. One of the most common causes of problems like these is wireless interference. Interference is basically noise in the wireless signal, and it can affect all the devices in your home, including Sonos. Imagine a room crowded full of people, and they're all talking at the same time. It'd be really difficult to hear somebody, even if they were standing right next to you. That's essentially what's happening when Sonos is being affected by wireless interference. One of the most effective ways to avoid interference is to change your router's wireless channel. To show you how to do this, I'll first need to talk to you a bit about how your wireless router works. Both your router and Sonos work on a 2.4 GHz wireless band, which is broken up into different sections called wireless channels. These channels range from channel 1 up to channel 13. If you're in the US, you'll see a range of 1 to 11 instead. If there's a lot of noise and interference near one channel, the router can switch over to another channel that has less noise. Usually the router automatically picks which channel it thinks is best, but you can also change it manually in the router settings. I'll show you how to try three different channels to help find which one is best for your network. The way you access and change your router settings depends on the type of router you have. Some routers let you change settings through your web browser, while others need you to use an app. If you aren't sure how to get to your router settings, make sure to check the router's manual or the router manufacturer's website for more information. In this setup, I'm using a Linksys router, which lets me change the settings through my web browser. I'm logged into the router already and I'm on the wireless settings page. The current channel is set to auto, which means the router is automatically deciding which channel to use. I'm going to manually set the wireless channel to one and press apply. Once you've applied new settings, some routers may need a reboot. So give it a few moments to allow your network to come back online. Afterwards, try testing a few tracks on Sonos and see how well it performs. If your Wi-Fi devices start to act sluggish, or if your Sonos system starts to have problems like audio dropouts, then the current channel probably isn't the best choice. I pick channel one in this case, but I can also pick channel six and channel 11. These two channels are traditionally the best ones to use because they have the least amount of overlap with each other. If you have your Sonos system in a standard wireless setup, then you only need to worry about changing the wireless settings of the router. However, if your Sonos system is in a wired boost setup, you'll also be able to change the wireless channel of the Sonos system itself. This can be done within your Sonos app under Advanced Settings. On my iPhone, I'll start by going to Settings, Advanced Settings. If Advanced Settings isn't there, check the description of this video for a link to an article that will help you out. Next, I'll pick the SonosNet channel. Remember, you'll only see this option if your Sonos system is in a boost setup. If your Sonos system is set up in a boost setup, you want to make sure that your router and Sonos are on different wireless channels. If they're on the same channel, they may interfere with each other. So, we have our network on a new wireless channel, but we can still do a bit more to prevent wireless problems. Other devices in the home can also contribute to wireless interference. And if they're too close to Sonos or your router, they can also affect the wireless signal. These are usually devices that run on the same 2.4 GHz wireless frequency. Some common devices that cause interference are cordless phones, wireless security cameras, and baby monitors. If you're experiencing problems like audio dropouts, and there's a device like this sitting close to your Sonos player or your router, then it's possible the device itself is causing the interference. Not all devices cause trouble with Sonos, but you can prevent problems in the future by making sure that they're not sitting too close to your router or to your Sonos products. If you think a nearby device is interfering with Sonos, you can find out by unplugging it from power temporarily and testing Sonos. If the problem goes away, then you may need to move the device a few feet away from your Sonos product before plugging it back in. If Sonos is in a boost setup, you'll also want to make sure that the wired Sonos product isn't too close to the router. It's possible that the two will interfere with each other. To recap, we've reduced wireless interference in the home by changing the wireless channel and by making sure that Sonos isn't sitting too close to other wireless devices. These steps have helped ensure that Sonos is in a healthy wireless environment and that you'll avoid wireless-related issues in the future. 
If you have any questions, please head over to our website at support.sonus.com and we'll be happy to help out. Thanks.